Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Board Explorer, out on another exploration, and I'm back in Duncton. And I'm, well, almost in a separate village today. To find out more, I'm joined by John Mays. Hello, John. Richard, hello. Lovely hello. to see you again. Welcome to Duncton again. It's fantastic. We are standing in a place that uh, many years ago I was actually a teacher. But that is a, another story, really. We're at Burton Park. When I was here, it was St. Michael's School, and I was teaching mime, of all things. But anyway, uh, we're going to look at the history of Burton Park and the magnificent house and previous houses that were behind us, because there's been a number, haven't there, John? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, three, all told, two destroyed by fire. Yes, mm. and one v almost at the same time as Cowdery House, uh, about it's 50 years similar. difference or yes, something. Yes, yes. But let's go back before then, because if I just bring the camera around this way a little bit, you'll see that this big park, which at one time was possibly a deer park and that sort of thing, but go back to the Doomsday Book. We know that there's a record of a village here. Yes, that's right really very close to where we're standing. There isn't an accurate record of it, but very close to where we're standing. And Doomsday Book describes, describes it as a, a bustling and, and a very vigorous village in, and performing on uh, fishing and woodland Wood, crafts yeah. and things like that. So it was all happening around about here with the chief's house or whatever you might call it right behind us more or less at yes. the same spot as that that's that's incredible and of course that the chief's house wouldn't have had this rather <laughs> elegant 18th century <laughs> no. uh, building at all it would no, have been no. much more uh, a, a possibly a round house of, of, of I guess so, yes. something yes, like that yes. Um, so we know that that was the situation and of course there's all the mills around here and the water which would have been essential for any yeah, uh, yeah, community yeah. and because it's mentioned in the Doomsday Book as a busy environment it must have been there back in the Saxon times and possibly before. I think so, I yes. should think so, yes. There's a lot of speculation. Yes. But our story gets more intriguing, does it not? Because when you come up to the Tudor period uh, the Gorings, the family called the Gorings, have moved in. Yep, yep. That's and right. there's a little bit of an upheaval going on for our villagers. <laughs> yes. Well, as you rightly said, this was a sort of a, a village area, a hunting area, I think is probably the best way yes. to describe it. Until the Goring family came along in about the 1550s, something like that. And it was at that time, this whole area. Um, was uh, registered as a park, right. park land, and started to be developed uh, you know, as that, as time went by. Uh, at that time, medieval times, it was um, quite common to say, well look, this is my very grand house, this is my very grand estate, I'm not too keen on having the no. villagers living just there. No, absolutely. So they were swept aside. So there's no real sort of concrete evidence of that. It's widely thought that this was the area for a number of reasons, not least of which being what the Doomsday, Doomsday Book, book yeah. says. And that they moved around the corner to Lodge Green, which we may see later on. Yes. It fits a nice sort of idea, but there is no proof there's of no it. Proof. But they would have had to have gone somewhere. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because back then in the Tudor times, that uh, primitive earlier house would have been something a lot more substantial possibly yes, of stone absolutely or yes, something yes, like that yes. now we should say if we take a little stroll this way we'll see the church and the church also plays um, a significant role yeah we've got railings around the church at the moment haven't we john would you yes. open the open the gate for sure, me sure. Uh, we can step inside to the yeah. the churchyard as is. Now, John, it's interesting because the church itself, which we see here as um, restored, and it does look very beautiful mm. in, in the setting as it is. We'll just walk around this way so we get a good view of it. Um, I mean, originally, obviously, it didn't quite look like this, but not much has been altered. But the interesting thing is it wasn't mentioned in the Doomsday Book, and yet it was still there, isn't that right? That's correct. No mention in the Doomsday Book of, of, of this church. 
I don't know what the reason was. There were lots of reasons why particular buildings weren't mentioned. Yes. Uh, it was a tax dodge, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> but, but something to do with finance and so yes. on. But for some reason, it wasn't recorded. True. But we do know, uh, or historians can estimate the time of its original construction from uh, various elements yep, that yep. we see uh, in the building itself, not least the brickwork and and things like this door here. That's right. I mean, the the uh, the church's long-term history. It did have a couple of years of of disuse and was rebuilt by that time we around about 1600. So before that, that was the south door right yes. there that we're looking at at the moment. And for some reason they decided to change that into uh, the west door to uh, we'll probably go in uh, in a little while. So that was one feature that more or less identifies it, 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 its point in time. And another is the, the this diagonal use of brickwork one to make the archway over the door and then another right up at the east end of the church. Let's there. have a look at that shall we? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes and we can see that the, I mean a lot of this is uh, built from ironstone which uh, yes. uh, was quite prevalent or is still prevalent. Very in much the, so straight from the sand itself highly yeah. compressed sand. Just going to quickly have a look ironstone. at this this sort of herringbone effect yes. that there there is in here which really helps to yeah to date it and that's what the experts base their their datings of about 1075 somewhere in there with some features such as those two things in particular but that especially wow well, I wasn't expecting quite as much in this church yes, from the outside. Yes. It sort of belies, doesn't it? You think it's yeah. just going to be very simplistic, but there's yeah. a lot in here to look at. And we don't have a huge amount of time. Uh, before we get to uh, the, the thing that we wanted to show you, I just want to take our attention to this rather magnificent m mural or wall painting, wall painting yeah. um, which is above us, 1636, mm. in the reign of Charles the First. Charles the First, yes. So I assume that that must be the uh, the royal crest of that time. Uh, yes, yes. So that's you know that that's something yeah. from yeah. that period yeah. which yeah. blows me away for for a starters. <laughs> yes. um, and then further down the aisle here in this very simple um, sort of nave and chancel church, we've got this here which obviously is the font now there's an interesting fact about this what well, the font yes well we think that this this part of it is probably the one of the oldest fonts in sussex is it uh, not the lid but this stonework yes is very old indeed yeah. so that could be yeah. norman something like something that. like that, that. Could be. Could absolutely be. further <clears throat> further down um we have the rood screen which Again, there's another interesting fact about that. Well, two well, we facts. Th yes, we, we think for a start that it, it must be imported. It doesn't quite fit. It's been tailored in there. Oh, right. Or How other. interesting. Uh, the way, I mean, it ends like that, but it doesn't do that at the other end. So right. it's been acquired from somewhere. But the, the colour that you actually see at the moment is the original colouring of it. So it's got that, it's got that a reddish hue. A reddish hue, yeah. yeah with um, what looks like stripes along yes, one bit yes, and then yes. little rows or flower petals yeah, yeah. along it's the amazing, top. amazing isn't it? It's Fascinating. It lasted that long. Yeah. On the wall above us or on the, on the, in the roof really is the Lord's Prayer. Is it the Lord's no, Prayer? No, it's the, the Ten, Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments, yes. Yes, yes. superb. Um, and then the rest of the church is, you know, there's so much you could say about this alone, mm -hmm. but we've come to see a lady Oh yes, yes. Where is she, John? Oh, what do you mean, uh, Lady Goring? Yes, yes, yes. 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 If we just well, so, come in here, John. Yes, so the family that really started off the whole of Burton Park as a registered park, and the, and the house that we've just seen, and and this is um, is in memory of them, and on the right there, in an attitude of prayer, is Lady Goring. And the very unusual thing about her is that she is wearing uh, a tabard, 
which I, I think is the only one in England of a woman wearing a tabard. Gosh, yes, yeah, so that's a brass, yes. isn't it, on, yes. on the wall there. Yes. And that's amazing. So she mm. obviously had an important role. Must have been, must have been, yes. But looking at the date, 1558, I think that's when she sadly died. Yes, yes. So she had not long really been the... So around about 1550 even, they're talking about registering the park, the Goring family, so all the hard work had been yeah. done, if you like. You yes. Know. Yeah. But the family were not only to have that as <clears throat> a, a terrible event, because sometime later there was a fire. That's right. So they had already built a house on the site that we've just seen, not that house. No, but on the, the site earlier one. Seen. And um, uh, that was uh, burned down uh, about 1720 or something like that, uh, which... Um, was then rebuilt. Which was then rebuilt and the same thing happened again about a hundred years later yes. to the next house. So two, two um, rebuilds and, yes. and the first rebuild by an Italian, yeah. a local Italian in the very Palladian style and then that burnt down and what we now see um, was later erected. That, yeah, that's right. There we go. Perfect. Good. Still fits. <laughs> We've stepped outside now because we're coming up to the end of our video. I'm yes, just going to come on yes. this side of you actually, okay. John, because down here we have two remarkable and important tombstones. Yes. They're lying flat actually, which is, um, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. not that unusual, but often people associate yes. tombstones with yes, sort of yes. perpendicular. Yes. Now tell us who these people are. Well, on the left here we've got Major John Courthold. Uh, who was the last private owner of this whole estate. And not, not only did he do great works in, in landscaping it, uh, it, it, he did do it with his wife, there was nobody else involved, but also had this wonderful uh, racehorse stable being brought on here. Oh yes, it was a stud, Excellent. wasn't it? A stud farm, yes. Yeah, it's amazing. Yes, and next to him lies his daughter, Barbara, who died 2002, I think it is. Yes, that's right. And. Um, really the last of, uh, of that, that line. And then thereafter, I mean, bef after the Gorings, there'd yes. been a number of other owners before yes, we get indeed, up to indeed, the major. Yes. But thereafter in 1942... Yes, it was requisitioned by the army. Because we were in the war, it, yes. Can't, can't you, yes. Second World War's going. Second World War's going. And... Uh, uh, and you have a personal memory, don't you, of Well, some, I certainly an event. do, actually, because in this whole parkland behind us now, um, this was one of the many assembly points that there was in this, the southeast corner of England, prior to the D-Day invasion. Oh, really? So all the way up and over these trees, there'd be soldiers with their personnel carriers or whatever they called them then, and yes. light tanks and so on, and their kitchens and everything. As far Getting as we ready were concerned, to... kids, it was really the top of the world. You know, <laughs> this <laughs> yes, this is imagine. what life was about. Yeah. So we thought at the time. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. yes. The innocence of youth. I know, I know. Yes. It's, uh, um, after that, I believe the police um, had the... For a short period of time, it was it was a, a training school for police dogs, I think. Which is incredible, isn't it? It goes <laughs> from, a, from a stud <laughs> to the army to it's dogs. Extraordinary. Yes. And then taken over by the school called St Michael's, which was part of the Woodard Group. And that's where they I stepped just, in. Yes, yes. As a, as a teacher in yes. the, I have to try and think when that was. It must have been in the eighties, I think. Uh, um, in the late eighties. I think 80s. it was a bit before that. It was sort of nineteen some nineteen fifties. Yes, I'm just thinking when I was there. Oh, when you were when there. When I was yes. there. So the school had the been there for a 80s, while. In the early eighties, it then closed. Yes. Whatever you did, it was closed. I, my fault. <laughs> well, uh, and now, of course, as we said at the beginning, they are private uh, flats worth yes. quite a considerable oh, sum. Yes, yes. And but just then. over your shoulder, behind you, which you can't see at the moment, Lavington Park, which was Seaford College, all boys. St Michael's, all, all girls. girls. Halfway between the two, the Cricketers Pub. What a splendid place. I think that's where we're going <laughs> next, isn't it? And there is a video about the Cricketers Pub. But thank you so much for watching. We've run well out of time, but it's been great to come back to Duncton. We're going to come back again, and so, there's so. more to Burton Park uh, for you to explore. We've, there's some fantastic trees, there's the lakes, and a whole load of other things. But for now, don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, 
Big thanks to John. Thank oh, you, John. My pleasure. My pleasure, Richard. Thank you. And we'll see you on the next one. Until then, bye-bye. 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 Cheers. Right, mine's a pint then. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this video. Why not help me make more and become a patron? A small donation really makes all the difference and keeps me out and about producing these magnificent presentations. So go to baldexplorer.com and become a patron today.